Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check a new micro brushless quadcopter from HGLRC, the Hornet 120mm quadcopter. This is the smaller brother of the HGLRC XJB 145mm quadcopter which I really liked and you can see it also comes in a smaller box version. The big difference of course is this one is a 3 inch quadcopter whereas this one is a 2.5 inch one. This quadcopter comes without a receiver so you will have to provide your own one. So let's take a look what we're getting inside. Inside we're getting the quadcopter. This velcro strap which I'm not a big fan of because normally when I used it the battery just slipped off the quadcopter so I recommend you to use a better one. In addition we're getting the instructions manual, screws for the propellers and some extra screws for the motors. The propellers which are Jamfan Halki 2540 propellers. We're getting six of them in total and we're getting also this cute Danazer AGLR series stickers. The first thing I notice about this quadcopter is that it looks very good and I wouldn't expect less from AGLRC and so far I've been very impressed with the product and no they didn't send me this product and I bought it out of my own money so they didn't pay me to say that. This quadcopter is featuring 1106 6000 kV motors. On the front we can find the ELF micro CCD camera and the middle stack is also made by AGLRC. This is the F413, the smaller brother of the F428. It features a 4 in 1 13 ampere ESC controller. On the center, we can find an F4 omnibus flight controller. On the top, we can find the VTX, which supports between 0, 25, 100, 200, and 350 millivolts output strength. On the back, we can find a buzzer with two LED indicators, and it uses an XT30 battery connector. As I mentioned earlier, this quadcopter comes without a receiver, but the wires are all soldered to the board. On the right, we can find the PPM, then the DSMX, SBUS, plus 5 volt, and the ground, which are already soldered. So I'm just going to remove the DSMX and PPM and connect this RXSR receiver to the SBUS ground and the plus 5 volts. Of course, if using DSMX, you will have to desolder the plus 5 volts and connect it to the 3.3 volts pad. So now after installing the RXSR receiver next to the camera, I also mounted the antennas and I put the repeaters. You can see how the quadcopter really looks like and it does look like a small beast. And here you can see how it looks next to the XJB 145mm quadcopter. Now by the way, one of the issues that I had with the 145 is that the camera lens was loose and I had to use this glue in order to mount it. It doesn't happen with this lens, although it is pretty easy to change the focus. So maybe after you get the best focus, it's a good idea to put some hot glue on top just to make sure it's not going to get loose while flying it. Now one thing that I didn't mention earlier is that this quadcopter does not support 4S LiPo batteries. It might be possible, but it's not recommended. And in my test flight, I'm only going to test with 2 and 3S batteries. And I think in my experience, it's going to be more than enough for this type of quadcopter. The weight of the quadcopter without the battery, of course, is 82.8 grams. So it's about 50 grams lighter than the XJB145. In addition, the thickness of the bottom plate, which is by the way a uni plate, is 2.5 millimeters, and the thickness of the sidewalls is 2.5 millimeters as well. So we are looking at very thick sidewalls, and I don't think they are going to break easily on a crash. And in addition, it provides a very good protection for the camera. You can see that in case of a crash, this cage is going to protect the camera pretty well. At least I hope so. Now, even though that the Hornet features the new generation of AGRC VTX, which means now we've got an OSD connector. You can see this is the older one which had a maximum output strength of 250 milliwatts, and this is the new one with the 350 milliwatt output strength. In the middle, we've got the OSD PX connector, which means you can connect it to a free UART and then through smart audio, you can change the channel frequency and output strength. But unfortunately, this flight controller doesn't have a free UART, so you're not going to be able to use the smart audio feature of this VTX. So in order to set it, you will need to press this button over here. Short pressing this button is going to change the channel. You can set it between one to eight. If you long press it for about two seconds, you can change the band. You will have six options. A, B, E, F, R, and L. And finally setting the output strength is done by long pressing this button for about five seconds. Then when you have the bar on top is 25, then 100, on the bottom is 200. And when two bars are present, now it's on 350 millivolts. On my test flight, I'm going to set it to F7 and set the output strength to 350 millivolts. 
Now, by the way, of course, it's recommended not to configure the VTX when you have propellers on. Same goes for configuration on Betaflight. So be careful. And even though these are small props, they can still cut you. So before putting the propellers on, configure everything and then put the propellers just to be on the safe side. The next thing I'm going to do is to go through beta flight configuration and then take it for a test flight and I'll see you in the end of this video in order to give you my conclusion. So overall I had a great time flying this quadcopter and I really think this is probably one of the best ready to fly micro quadcopters you can get at the moment, but it still suffers from a couple of issues. First of all, when the throttle was at a high point, I got a lot of vibrations and after I finished the test flights I saw Albert Kim's video and he mentioned after replacing the 
camera, the vibrations stopped. So I think that the problem with this lens that it is too loose and even after putting some hot glue on top in order to secure it, I don't think it was enough and I think the vibration were because of this lens. So I think that AGLOC should improve the mechanism of this camera in order to make it more secure so the lens won't come loose. If you happen to have this quadcopter, I recommend to put more hot glue around the lens and hopefully it will solve the vibrations issue. I didn't get it when I flew it on 2S, but with 3S it was very noticeable. Second of all, this quadcopter is not cheap. If you compare it to the Leader 120, for example, it costs about $60 more, but you have to take into consideration that the camera that this quadcopter is using is better than the stock camera of the Leader 120. And I also think that the Leader 120 is better for beginners and this one should be used by more advanced pilots because this thing is very fast and sometimes it can be hard to control, especially when flying it on 3S. So if you're a beginner and you get this quadcopter, I recommend to start with the 2S and then when you advance, move to 3S batteries. I got about 3 minutes of flight time using the 2S 450mAh LiPo battery and about 3.5 minutes of flight time using this 550mAh LiPo battery and I think that the best batteries to be used with these quadcopters are between 400 to 600mAh LiPo batteries probably 450 is going to be the best one. In addition, the buzzer was very strong and on the few times that I crashed it, it helped me to recover the quadcopter. So it was a good thing to have. And finally, don't use the stock Velcro as I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Use these kind of Velcros. You can see that now the battery is well secure and it's not going to go anywhere. Whereas the included Velcro is not going to be as secure as this one. I also think that the upgrade VTX did a very good job and I got a pretty nice range and also the general picture quality was very good so the only downside as I mentioned of this camera is the lens otherwise it provided very good picture during the daytime and also as you could see in the end of the flight test at nighttime. So as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Because I really like this quadcopter, I'm thinking about upgrading it and add the Runcam Split Mini. It's not going to be easy because definitely it's not going to fit inside. I think I'm going to mount it on top or something like that. I will have to figure it out. See you on my next videos and goodbye.